well, this is an absolute first for me, we're taking an A330 freighter for a spin, a little spin around the airport. This is going to be cool. Join me. Let's do it together. Welcome to part two of my three-part series looking at what happens behind the scenes in the world of aviation with the team from FEM Aerospace in Cincinnati. In episode one, we went into the hangar and saw how they changed the landing gear of 767. Now it's time to get out of the hangar and see how they keep CVG flying. We'll take that A330 for a spin, chase down a 747 and get this Frontier A320 ready to fly. And we'll find out what happens when an aircraft breaks down in some remote corner of the world. Let's get straight into it on the ramp with the A330 freighter as the team gets ready to test the steering. It turns out you can't just turn the steering wheel on a 120 ton aircraft and expect the wheels to turn. The solution is remarkably low tech but effective. Two steel plates, some grease and voila! The team had spent the last two days working on a series of faults with the front landing gears. Now, before they can release the aircraft back into service, they need to run a full set of tests. So far, so good. Now for the next step, taking this baby for a spin around the airport. To say I was excited to be sitting in the jump seat is an understatement. The first step was a full safety briefing, including how and where to evacuate to if something goes wrong. This aircraft is operated by Hawaiian Airlines, so their rules and procedures apply. Sitting in the hot seats today are Hawaiian CVG Maintenance Manager Jeremy Penn and FEMS Line Maintenance Manager Mike Brown. Together they have to agree that the aircraft is fully fit before it can return to service. This test requires the aircraft to move under its own engine power, so this is treated the same as any departure, except for the takeoff bit of course. This meant running through the various pre-departure checklists and getting tower approval for pushback. Amazon Ramp Hawaiian Maintenance Alpha 9. Hawaiian Maintenance Amazon Ramp. Yes ma'am, uh, we'd like permission to push back and uh, start engines, call for taxi. Hawaiian Maintenance, push and start approved, Alpha 9. Push and start approved, Hawaiian Maintenance Alpha 9, thank you. This was so cool. I got to see exactly what happens in the cockpit as the flight crew starts the engines and prepare for departure. Start clearance have received, engine start selector, engine start. All right, we're ready ignition start. Idle in one, 23. Good. Fuel flow, 1800. Good. If we're out and about and we get the nose of steering disconnect issue again, we're gonna have to stop the aircraft. We'll give it another attempt at the tilt. We'll try to recycle the nose of steering switch and see if we can get the steering back. If we can't get the steering back, we'll stop, we'll set the brakes. We're gonna have to get a tow in. Okay. That should be our only Outside of the other emergencies listed on our checklist, that would be our only or one off based on this operational check that we're doing. And likewise, if I have, we do have an emergency, please read the checklist. Yep. Like you said, if you read, I'll do. Most of the time, I just watched and listened in awe as the guys did their stuff, pinching myself that I was cruising around the airport in the cockpit of an A330. The view from up here is so much better than the view from the passenger windows I'm used to. As we taxied around the airport, I got an appreciation of just how big CVG is. CVG, or Cincinnati Northern Kentucky International Airport, is the sixth busiest cargo airport in the US and the 12th busiest cargo airport in the world. The two major cargo players at CVG are Amazon and DHL. However, ABX, Atlas and Kalita Air also have operations here. All up, this airport handles over 11,000 freight flights and well over 2 million tons of cargo per year. That's a lot of online shopping. On the passenger side, the airport handles over 9 million passengers per year, mainly to domestic cities within the US. Eventually, we made our way back to the massive Amazon ramp and taxied to our parking bay. This was the moment of truth. The steering had handled well during our test drive. However, the final verdict would come from the aircraft's onboard computer and monitoring systems. So an update on what's happened. The whole taxi went right, all the tests went right when we did the whole taxi round, but then doing the final checks, some of the faults came back up again. So uh, the aircraft is not safe to fly and uh, they will not let it fly until it is absolutely passed all of the tests. So uh, the engineers, the mechanics have got to uh, go through uh, the troubleshooting. They think it's the electrics um, and they'll start to work on that, but this aircraft's not taking off tonight. It would ultimately be another 10 days and two short test flights before this A330 entered service again. That's how seriously FEM and the airline industry takes aircraft maintenance and aviation safety. 
If an aircraft breaks down here at CVG, FEM can get them back in the air quickly because this is where they have a major facility, the equipment and the teams to go with it. But what happens when an aircraft has a major breakdown at a remote airport? Well, that's when the flying squad springs into action. 100%. No, we are, we are the flying squad. Yeah, yeah. We, ru we run the crews that uh, travel globally fixing tore up airplanes. All if the major whoopsies that happen, yeah. we get to go to the location and uh, help make the birdie fly again. So we're looking, we're looking at a couple now, one, uh, one up in Calgary. It's a A330 that was damaged by a belt loader. There's a crew down in Baku now that's working the 747-8, which is a, uh, there's a stringer um, AD out for uh, cracking. So. so no job is ever the same, no day is oh, ever no. the same. Never. It's always exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's different environments, change everything. Uh, yeah, we're, we are very much adapt and overcome type of a crew. Yes. And so our crew is very tight knit. They're like very top notch, yeah. very skilled in what they do mm -hmm. and very willing to travel and be on the road for long periods of time and away from their families. Um, but we have a lot of fun together and yeah. we enjoy it. And Fantastic. it's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. We get to do really cool stuff in really cool places and not cool places. Yes. Um, I've been to Tahiti a couple times, I've been to Thailand. And on Friday afternoon, I was on a plane to Mexico City to work on an MD-11. I did go into Libya. Yeah, I did a, uh, an MD-80 there. Uh, I've been to Afghanistan. Uh, I got an airplane out there that had a tail strike. Went to Togo. I've uh, been to Equatorial Guinea a couple times. Oslo. I've been to 99 countries all over the world. How cool would it be to share a few beers with these two and hear all about their adventures? I asked them what brought them to CVG. So this bird here behind us had an issue with a couple of fasteners that we're trying to get out. So we've got a, we've got a handful of the guys that are working it now. They're having to drill out the inside of the fastener to get it to loosen up so we can get it out of the wing. Again, so this is a vent. Um, and what we're doing here is we're closing the tank out so that the guy that's inside the tank working on those two fasteners has clean air to breathe. So it's not, it's not breathing, um, it's like you got fuel. Yeah. So it's inside the fuel tank. He's inside the tank. Yeah. yeah. He's inside the tank, back in that section right there. Wow. Taking a closer look at those fasteners and the drill bits they were using to remove them, it quickly becomes clear that every part and every tool is numbered, registered and recorded. This industry is highly precise and highly regulated, and that doesn't come cheap. This fastener, which is what these guys are, are fixing up here, $1,500. I think that's US. That's not US. Hong Kong dollars, no, is it? That's not Hong Kong. <laughs> that's US. Wow. That's why it's so expensive to fly and to, uh, and to buy an aircraft. I'll feature more of my interview with Lindsay and Mike in part three of this series, where I ask them how they got into this part of the industry. It's a fascinating story and a good reason to hit that subscribe button. Next, it was time to head over to the passenger terminal where mechanic Jennifer was tasked with the turnaround service of a Frontier A320. As soon as a flight arrives and the engines have been shut down, the ground crew springs into action. Jennifer is looking for any fluid leaks and for external damage that may have been caused by bird strikes or even stones on the runway. The entire aircraft is checked, including all leading edges, the engines and landing gear. Meanwhile, mechanic Julio checks the fluid levels before they both head up into the aircraft for the internal checks. They check with the cam and crew and the pilot for any maintenance issue that need attention. On this flight, the incoming captain is also the outgoing captain, and there were no issues to report. Awesome, thank you very Have much. Have a good day, sir. All right, take care. Yep. So the flight deck crew is happy, all the checks are done, and uh, it's back outside. With all the checks done, the flight crew happy, and the passengers and fuel loaded, the aircraft is ready to push back and start its onward journey. Not all turnarounds are this easy. Whether an aircraft needs an oil top up or a wheel replaced, FEM has them covered with supplies and staff at the ready to ensure a quick turnaround. Once a Frontier jet was on its way, my day became even cooler. We saw on Flight Radar 24 that a 747 freighter was inbound from Anchorage, Alaska. So Julio and I did what any self-respecting avgeeks would do. We positioned ourselves so we'd have a full view of the runway. After it landed, we took chase and followed it, safely of course, all the way to its bay. 
these really are stunning pieces of equipment and this is the ultimate way to finish my day out on the ramp. I'm so grateful for this experience and want to give a massive thanks to the team at Feem for making it possible. I hope you've enjoyed this glimpse behind the scenes of aircraft maintenance and it's given you a new appreciation of just how complex this industry is. In part 3 of this series, I delve deeper into the training side of aircraft mechanics and how Feem's unique joint venture with EPIC is training the next generation of aircraft mechanics and engineers. If you've ever been interested in a career in aviation, this is the one to watch. So hit that subscribe button and notification bell and you won't miss out. Thanks for watching. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and check out the rest of my videos on my channel. And as always, happy travels.